Huh. Color mixer thing. Point color mix. This is new. Well, let's see here. I'll just go right here. What in the world? This is awesome. This changes everything. I'm very excited about the release of Adobe Camera Raw 16.0.0. This is awesome, fantastic. A color tool that I never knew that I needed, that now that I've seen it, I want it and I wanna play with it and I'm gonna go back to all my images and redo everything. <laughs> It's very rare that a feature like that comes out that makes me just want to color vomit all over the place. But Matt Koskowski called me today and said, hey, did you check out the new Adobe camera? I said, no, I'm working on stuff for the Photoshop Virtual Summit. He said, you might want to install it because there's some color things in there that I think you might like. I'm playing with it as we're talking. I'm like, what the actual? This is amazing. So I'll get to that. First, let's talk about all the new features in Adobe Camera Raw 16. We'll go right down the list and then I'll hop into my favorite new feature that I think you are going to love. The other ones, meh, they aren't really that great. There's a new HDR button right here next to auto and black and white. Now, what does this actually do? When we press the HDR button, this allows us to see uh, what it would look like on an HDR display and create images for HDR displays. I say that very specifically because it's only for HDR displays. Yes, we get four more interesting stops there on our histogram, but we can't do much with it. As I feel right now, our technology really isn't where it needs to be for us to actually be able to take advantage of the HDR feature. We can't print these images after we edit them. They won't have the same color features that we're looking at. They have to be exported very specifically to an HDR specific file and are only really good for HDR displays. And since I don't really work too much on HDR displays and I don't think many of us do, it's not a feature that I find incredibly functional yet. But I think as technology progresses, this is gonna be something that I'll take another further look into in the future. But as of right now, I pretty much do things for social media and for print, and I don't really do them for HDR displays. So this really doesn't do anything for me right now. Now there's also this lens blur feature here that's been added. You can see things are a little bit different here. Um, this is not something I'm gonna work on with this image because I don't think it really needs lens blur, but you can experiment with this and I might come back and do another tutorial on this one later, maybe for some portrait work or some of my uh, still photography stuff. But when it comes to landscapes, I will control that bokeh effect in the lens and not necessarily here, but it's an option. You can experiment with it. It's brand new. I, like I said, this image, it's not really gonna be suitable for, but I really wanna get into the color mixer. But before I do that, we have to talk about this new section up here, light, color, and effects. What's happened here is they've taken out the tint and temperature sliders from this area and put them in the color section with the vibrance and saturation. They've also taken out the texture, clarity, and dehaze and put it in effects with our vignette and grain, which actually is a much more suitable place for it. And I'm actually shocked that it took them this long to separate those things out. So light now is only going to be our exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks, okay? Now, the interesting thing and what we all wanna talk about, the color mixer. There is a new thing in here called the point color. What the heck is this? Well, let's take a look at the other color mixer first. What you can see here is that we have access to hue, saturation, and luminance. And in the past, this was actually a pretty good breakdown of the hue, saturation, and luminance of a given color. And that was great, all fine and well, right? Then they introduced this color thing here. We could actually go into an individual color to make it a lot easier for us and increase the saturation and the hue and the lightness of a given color. But if that wasn't enough, Adobe went ahead and gave us something new, and that's called the point color. This is awesome. I'm telling you, this is something I never knew I needed as a color theory specialist, but now that I have it, I'm never gonna be able to live without it. Thank you, Adobe. Let's dive in. So what we need to do here is we need to first select a color from our image that we wanna work with. This is at the Dallas Divide just outside of Uray and Telluride in Colorado. Wonderful fall color experience last week there. But I wanna select this yellow color here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the sample point color and I'm gonna select something that's in the mid range of that color yellow there. Now it's not a very bright yellow. And in the past, how I would brighten up the image is maybe with the mixer, but I would probably brighten up this color using something like the exposure slider to get some more brightness in here. But now I don't need to do that because I can control all my colors right here from this point color. So I'm gonna select the yellow that's kind of in the mid range of yellow. So maybe this one will work right here. Now what you'll see here is that you have three sliders that are hue, 
saturation, and luminance, and then another one here that says range and a drop down. On this side, you have your luminance control. And then if you go left to right is your hue control and then up and down is your saturation control. So you can either control this from right here in this dialog or from the sliders. And I love that Adobe always gives us multiple options for adjusting our colors here, whether we wanna do it with sliders or we wanna do it with this. Now, let's say I want these yellows to be a little bit more on the yellow side. I'll pull them over here. This would be making them a little bit more yellow and less saturated. This would be making them more yellow and more saturated. So you'll see that this color is already pretty saturated to begin with because it's at the highest point of the spectrum. If it was down here, this would be a very light yellow or kind of a like a desaturated yellow, okay? So this is really interesting. As I move this up, that's gonna make it more saturated. Move it left, it's gonna change the hue. Move it right, it'll change the hue to be more green. Now you'll notice that the hue that we have here is a little bit more than what we would get in the mixer section here. If I go into the hue of this color, we get a little bit more of a push. So these sliders only go about 15 degrees around the color wheel. And it would appear that these sliders over here in the point color actually let us go about 30 degrees on the color wheel and expand a little bit more out into the other colors that are close to the color yellow here. So I actually like the sliders here. I like that I get both options where I can say, well, you know, I'll just move this around till I get the color that I want. And it's gonna move these sliders independently. But if I need to really fine tune that color, I can come down here. What I like about this too is that the luminance is a very fantastic luminance. And if you were there that night standing next to me, you would know that these yellow trees all throughout the whole canvas and just lit up like Christmas trees. The extended function that we get here that anytime you're in Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom's develop module and you see this little triangle here, that's an arrow that indicates that if you open that up, it'll show you that there's more that we can do here. And this is where we get the extreme control over our color. For some people, this might be too much control, but for color theory enthusiasts that have been diving into color since day one and love it, this is going to be something that you cannot live without. I'm telling you that because now that I have it, I know I can't live without it. So what, what is this? Well, let's turn off the range preview here and see what's happening. What's happening is when we selected this color, it, Adobe is doing these calculations and saying, okay, in order to make this look natural, what we're gonna have to do is make a selection for this color and then go out to the localized colors that are close to it. Because if we just gave you that color and you move the slider, it would be disgusting. So they give you this range thing that gives you the ability to extend how far out that color is going to go into the other colors around it. So how you work with this or how I've started to work with this is to increase the range all the way up to kind of see what, what colors I can get in this selection here, okay? And then you also have a hue range, saturation range, and a luminance range within that range. Oh my gosh. It's kind of hard to explain. I get it. And you're probably thinking to yourself, Blake, you need to stop drinking coffee. And I don't drink coffee. I drink tea. But here's the deal. If we break these down and look at what's happening here, we are saying that within this range, we can let the hue be selected in, all, in these other colors. So we can move this out and get a little bit more of those reds selected. Okay. Or we can move it out and get a little bit more of those greens selected. And that will change the saturation and the hue of those greens and of those reds that are in that range that we're allowing it to spread out to. Saturation, and we want this to be not necessarily in just this area, but maybe extend down further into the lower saturated yellows, okay? And as we do that, we're grabbing more yellow from those lower saturated yellows that are happening up here in the sky. Now, when we turn this preview on and off, it gives us a really good way of seeing that. That might be too much, but the idea is that we can grab more than what it was initially grabbed by that slider. And you can see here that as we move this down, you can see as we move these sliders down here, look at this, the way this is changing up here. As we move this, it's saying that, okay, anything that is in the white area is not gonna be in that range. But as we move this up, that white changes and it's saying, well, the only thing that we're gonna allow uh, to change is the saturation range is gonna be anything that's in this very close proximity to this color. But as we move that range out, it's saying, well, no, we can get more of these lower saturated yellows in here. Maybe some of these uh, these saturation, maybe some of these greens that are over here as well, because we've already allowed that from this hue range over here. You see that? So essentially, this box that we've created here from our range as we move this over is showing us 
how far out it can go to the left and the right. Okay, so we've gone all the way out to the reds and all the way out to the greens. And we can see that as we move this this way, we are saying, no, you can take less of those reds. Now you see that this has a little arrow over here for this. Keep looking at that box up there because that is our feather. So we're saying that, okay, you can reach out to these reddish colors, but slowly feather and taper out so we get a nice natural transition into these other colors of red. Now we've, we've basically pegged it over here on the green side that says, no, you can take all those greens. So we can, as it's pegged all the way over here, we'll move this over so that it doesn't select quite as much of those greens. And you can see it there up in this area here of what's being selected. If at any time you wanna to toggle the uh, range on and off, press the Alt or Option key as you move that and it'll toggle this range preview on and off. You can see that as we move this here, okay? So we want a nice strong feather here for our saturated uh, colors. We want a nice strong feather for our colors that are going out into the reds and into the yellows. And then obviously down here with the range, the luminance range, it's no different there either. And you can see here on this slider, as we move this over, it's saying, okay, you can have more of the color selected here. As we increase this and decrease this, you can see what's feathering for the range of the luminance of those colors that are in close proximity. This is awesome. And I'm trying to explain it as best as I can, but it's not gonna be one of those things that you're gonna grab just like that. You know, like, oh, I know exactly how to use this now. Blake, what I need you to do, if you really want to, to get into this, is you're gonna need to dive in here and experiment just like I have over the last couple hours of having this installed on my machine. So I can really dial in and refine these colors and make them magnificent. And then at any time I can come back here and reduce this range and use this almost as like my master, uh, my master slider, so to speak. Okay, so after I get this all the way increased, I can kind of dial in exactly where I want those yellows to be. Now I'll turn this preview on and off and look at the amount of control and color I have there in those yellows. This is awesome. I'm telling you, this is completely 100% genuine, natural excitement. I'm glad I record this stuff as soon as this thing comes out. So now what I can do, let's uh, let's do something a little bit different here. Let's let's jump over into the masking section and show you that if we wanna control our blue values here for just what's happening in the sky, this all is in the masking section as well. So let's go ahead and dive over into the masking section and I'll go ahead and just make a selection for the sky. And when I make that selection for the sky, you'll notice that down here in our point color, we can do the exact same thing we just did, but at a local level so that it's not affecting the entire canvas. This is amazing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this sample and grab this color of blue. And again, I can change the hue of that color up there. I maybe boost the saturation of that blue to balance out the yellow that I have down here. And then maybe make that a, a brighter blue or a lighter blue. But I always have my range slider here too, so I can select more of that. And this is what I love about this because there is a range slider in Photoshop for any select selected color where you can extend the range of what's gonna be in that color. But it does it based on the color itself and not necessarily the range of the hue, the range of the saturation, or the range of the luminance. This is color theory on steroids. This is next level color theory. I never thought that I would see a tool like this, nor did I ever know that I would need a tool like this. There's that little quadrant thing where like, you know what you know, you know what you don't know. I'm in the, I don't know what I don't know section. I didn't know about this tool because it never existed. And now that it does, and I know about it, I have to know more about it. Amazing how I could be in the dark on a tool like this and, and not know that this existed. And it, it might've existed in some other software before, but the only thing I use is Adobe software. So if we've got some Capture One people out there, so oh, the Capture One has always had this. Great, good for you. Now it's in Adobe Camera Roll and Lightroom and I freaking love it. This is awesome. Again, genuine excitement. Okay, so maybe here I'll just bo boost up that saturation a little bit, but I don't want it to be in the darkest colors up there because it's messing up over here. But I do want it to be in those lightest colors over here. So yeah, I can just say, nope, don't want that in those darker blues. I only want those in those lighter blues. And how do we want to saturate this? Looks pretty good with the range there. I like that in the saturation range and the hue range. I don't really want to change that too much, but I might boost the master range there and then increase that saturation. Maybe decrease the luminance a little bit, but then not allow that to happen to those darker blues that are up there. So I'll move that over so it's really only in those lighter blues on where that's happening. And there's the before and the after on that, okay? And that is wonderful. So we'll go back to our beginning here. The great thing about this though is that, guess what I still have access to? 
throughout this whole process. I still have access to my mixer section. And in the mixer section, I can take these yellows further as well. I can still take these yellows further and maybe adjust the hue and the saturation and the luminance of these yellows just like I did before. But I've got the point color and I've got the mixer color and both of them are working together on this image so that I can create the yellow that I want to create in this image. Just like I saw it, because if you saw these yellows, they, they looked almost exactly like that. So beautiful. This is color theory, as I said, on steroids, next level color theory that I never knew that we needed in any of the software that I've ever experimented with. What I will say though, is be careful because just like any color tools, you can take it to the extreme very quickly. Okay. So try to be as natural about it as possible, but also put your vision in there and don't be afraid of color and don't let people tell you to be afraid of color either because that happens all the time on social media. Well, it looks a little bit saturated to me. Well, you know, you weren't there. You know, it's my vision. It's my imagination and how it crosses paths with reality. And that's what photography is all about, especially being an artist photographer. And I'm really appreciate Adobe for giving us a phenomenal artist photographer tool here in Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom. I want to thank you very much for taking the time to watch this. I do sincerely appreciate it. And if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing. I like to take things that are difficult in Photoshop and Adobe Camera Raw and make them seemingly simple so that you can use them in your workflow today.